um, and I think it's called uh, fish syndrome. Fish odor syndrome, isn't it, Dawn? Yes. We've got Dr. Dawn Porter with us this morning. And, and Karen James, who, who sadly suffers with this. Um, and this means that your breath, and you say sometimes your, your body odour and sweat smells of rotten egg. Yeah, rotten egg. It can be a faecal odour as well. Um, the name fish odour syndrome is really misleading and it um, can prevent people from being diagnosed diagnosed because in fact the odour can be faecal or rotten egg. Um, in my case it manifests itself mostly through the breath but other people can um, emit the odour through the feet, the groin area, the armpits, it varies from individual mm. to individual. And we have interviewed a, a lady on here. I think yes. So yeah. yeah. And she yeah. said hers was was more kind of fishy and mm. almost she said like old rubbish smell. It really yeah. affected so her life so badly. Um, mm. Obviously it's a very embarrassing thing to do was when did it first happen to you? Because you can, um, this can be genetic, Dawn. Yes, absolutely. You can yeah. be born with yeah. this, but that mm -hmm. wasn't the case for you, was it? Uh, no, I believe not. It came on, I would say, approximately 10 years ago. Um, there are two types of this TM, TMAU type 1. Um, I believe I've got the acquired type, which is TMAU type 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it can result from an infec in an infection and it can it can happen to anyone at any time and I'm kind of represented not just people who have who have TMAU mm. but there are many other syndromes which are similar which are as yet unnamed. And how easy or difficult was it to get a diagnosis? It's extremely difficult. Um, one of the reasons I've come on the show is to raise awareness of the condition. Um, doctors don't know about it, dentists don't know about it, so you end up going round and round in circles, wasting lots of time and NHS money doing investigations which are totally irrelevant. Dawn, why don't doctors know about it? Well, it is rare. I mean, I've been a GP for many years and not seen a case in surgery. Actually, it's something we covered on embarrassing bodies. Yes. And it is, as Karen just said, it's very distressing. Oh, yeah. And it's basically, it's a build-up of this chemical, trimethylamine, which we all produce, you and I produce it, um, and it's produced for the, from the breakdown of things like meat and fish. But what normally happens is that the TMA gets broken down further to TMO, which doesn't smell of anything. If you get a build-up of TMA, then your sweat and your breath can start to smell fishy or like rotten eggs or different so can odors. you control it? You can. It rather depends 
Evans on why you've got it. So mm -hmm. as we've just covered, it can be down to a genetic deficiency, a problem with an enzyme, which means you can't break the TMA down. Or it can be linked to an overgrowth of bacteria in the gut, which means that actually you're producing too much TMA. And there are a number of ways of tackling things. So we can either say, okay, we've got to be really strict with the diet, but that can be pretty miserable. You mm. cut out all mm. the things that, that might cause a buildup of TMA. You can use some skin creams with a, a low pH so that you can neutralise the odour. And sometimes you can take like charcoal tablets to try and help. And, to absorb and what it. if you tried, Karen? What would you advise? What the this? Um, and I would say I'd hope for anybody who's watching and thinks they might have this condition to be very optimistic and try all the approaches that Dawn's just mentioned. However, they're very limited. The treatment protocol is basically inadequate. Um, the diet that we are given is almost impossible to reduce choline from your diet to such an extent that you can eliminate the TMA so what can you eat? Loads of things. I'd rather say what I can eat, <laughs> oh, okay. which is carrots, <laughs> carrots, um, celery, pineapple, strawberries, um, potatoes. So I no meats and no protein. Hardly any protein. I do a diet of no protein for four days, which is um, grueling, to say the least. You feel very weak by the fourth and day. And how has this affected you emotionally? We're obviously talking about all the physical effects. You said the smell yeah. and how, what your diet. But yeah. what's that emotionally for you? Well, I think. This is, uh, I consider this a disability. It's an unrecognised disability. And I think TMAU and also other um, odour producing conditions, um, which are yet to be researched, they all produce the same effect, which is basically um, it's a form of solitary confinement. I mean, we use solitary confinement as a, you know, a, a way of, it's part of our judicial system to kind of further punish But, um, you know, I feel as if I'm in a, a form of solitary confinement by having this condition because it's socially isolating. You know, you're not relaxed, at least social interaction is. Yeah, which is very difficult. I've reduced my hours to, you know, I've half my workload basically. So kind of reduce time stress to reduce the stress because stress also exacerbates the condition, it makes it worse. And have you had kids say, oh, Miss, you stink? Um, I have. It's but, like, um, I don't <laughs> hold back, do they? Yeah, but um, when people react to my odour, um, I don't actually get offended because I would probably do the same when 
where I'm in, the, in their position. What does um, kind of irritate me is the fact that nobody seems to care about the condition enough to investigate it, to you know research it, and to raise awareness amongst the medical professionals in the country so that they can help people like me who for 10 years ago about not knowing why they stink and you know we don't get the help that we need. How, how low have you been? Um, oh, sometimes I get very low but actually I was never on the brink of suicide so I do need to oh. <laughs> correct that headline. Okay. Never, yeah. never. Um, I'm a very positive person. I do yoga. Um, uh, you know, I, I try to think positive and do positive things, and that helps me to stay um, a very kind of positive, energetic Can I just say, I'm quite close to you. I cannot smell. Well, Thank you. 